Charlotte Kane, you're standing as a Lib Dem candidate uh, for the constituency of Harlow. Why are you standing? I'm standing because I think this is a really important election. Uh, we've got a, a lot ahead of us as a country. We've got to sort out what we want to do about Brexit. Personally, I want to put an end to it and I want to move on. So I want to stay in, in Europe and I want to move on to dealing with the things that I know really matter to all of us, like making sure we have a healthy environment, that we've got a good health service, good funding for our schools, proper housing for people to live in, all of these things that have been put on hold for three years while we've debated Brexit. I want to move on to those. The vast majority of people would probably ask me to say this now, oh, hold on a minute, we had 26, June 2016, 68% of the people who voted here have voted to leave. Are you going to respect that? We've respected it in as much as we've spent three years, government has spent three years trying to deliver Brexit. And the problem is everybody voted for something slightly different. Some people voted for a Brexit that was still going to support the British economy because we were going to be very close to Europe. Other people voted for a Brexit where we would be pulling a long way away from Europe. So that would impact on our economy and our jobs. Um, and some people voted voted, frankly, to kick the government of the day. Um, so nobody's really clear on exactly what they meant by Brexit. So Theresa May went and got a deal, and nobody liked that deal. Uh, Boris Johnson's gone and got a deal. Uh, it seems most people don't like that deal either. But when you say nobody's really clear, is that the type of language that people, certainly people in heart, don't like? They say, well, I'm very clear. They might say, I'm very clear about it. And they'll say, leave means leave, or they just, if it means no deal, they're very clear what they want. I, I think individuals are clear, mm. but what the total vote meant is, is not clear. And so you've got, even within the Tory party, you've got the whole spectrum from people who, like uh, Rhys Mogg, who seem quite keen to leave without a deal and take us into uh, a Singapore on Thames with minimal workers' rights, minimal environmental protection, um, and, uh, and really making us economically competitive with countries like Singapore and America that don't have uh, free at the point of use health services, don't have workers' rights, uh, in some cases don't even have uh, proper functioning democracies. Um, and then you've got all the way to the other extreme, you've got people like Steve Hammond, who was absolutely clear that you had to have a deal and that um, you needed very close alignment with the European Union in order to protect jobs and Britain's prosperity. So even in one party, you've got that whole gamut, let alone in all the people who actually went out and voted for Brexit and what they were promised. And uh, I remember people like Boris Johnson promising them that it was going to be re really easy, that dealing with the Northern Ireland issue was just like uh, between two boroughs in London. Uh, and he doesn't seem to have really fully grasped. Um, you know, I, I remember the uh, troubles in Northern Ireland. I, I went to university in Birmingham just after the Birmingham pub bombs. Uh, I saw the impact of the troubles. Uh, people died, people were killed, people were maimed, people's lives were ruined. Uh, and he doesn't seem to understand that changing how the border works in Ireland is going to have a huge impact. Would you be disappointed though, I know, you know, here we are, and whilst we're interviewing you, the may, the may well the election may have been called, you yes. know, um, but would you be disappointed if the next five, six weeks between now and early mid-December will be dominated by Brexit or would you like it to be spread out to another of some uh, issues and if so, what are those issues? I think it's inevitable that this election is going to be about Brexit because that's why it's been called, because Parliament can't decide if and how to deliver Brexit. So, so the election has been called to try and resolve that and I hope it will. And, and I'm certainly going to be very clear that a vote for the Lib Dems is a vote to remain in the EU. However, one thing we can all agree, leavers, remainers, we can all agree, is that the last three years we've not tackled issues that really matter.
to people. And so I would like to talk about those in the election as well, because as Lib Dems, we have plans to increase the funding for the NHS, an extra six billion uh, to, to get things back where they should be. And then we need to work with other parties to come up with ways to ensure proper secure funding into the future. But also we need to keep the costs down. And one of the risks of Brexit is that we'll have to, we'll need to have a trade deal with America and they will be very keen to see what, what they see as a more competitive market focus. And we will see potentially the price of drugs to the NHS going up significantly. So that would be bad, even whether or not you've put mon more money into it. So the NHS, I think, is important to all of us. We've all benefited from it. We all, no doubt, will benefit from it in the future. We need it to be there. Uh, and I hope that will be one of the campaign issues. Um you're a councillor in East Cambridgeshire? Yes. Uh, and one noticed in May, in the local elections, real success in East Cambridgeshire, Chelmsford, or independent candidates, you know, party residents in Uttlesford. Um, and, and then indeed, by-election after by-election, wards across the country, Lib Dems doing well. Do you think there's a real Lib Dem bounce? And can that come down here into Harlow? I think there absolutely is a Lib Dem bounce. I think people are looking for straightforward politicians who are willing to be honest. I know my message won't go down well with everyone in Harlow, but I'm not going to pretend, I'm not going to sort of sit on the fence and say to leave as well, you know, maybe um, I'm going to be honest with people. I think we should remain in the EU. Uh, I can explain why and, and um, then people can take it or leave it. But we'll also talk about the other issues like health, education, housing. And help people to to see that they have another option and i think people are people are much more volatile than they used to be um sort of 10 20 years ago people would say to me i'm born and bred labor i've always voted tory um i'm not getting that now i'm getting people saying well what are you standing for what what are the lib dems going to do and they're listening, whether that will turn into a vote, but they are at least listening. It's not a standard, I've always voted Labour or Tory. You're up against a very high profile MP, Robert Halfon. He won in 2010, 15, 17. You've got a young, ambitious uh, Labour candidate in Laura McAlpine. Can you compete against these candidates? I hope so. I don't intend to compete on a personal basis. I intend to compete on policies. Um, I think uh, that Brexit will be bad for the country and bad for people in Harlow. I think people will find that it's harder to get work. It will be harder if they're in work to get pay rises. I think they'll find uh, even more examples of things like it's happening at ASDA at the moment where people are being told you need to accept a new contract because if, if we pull away from Europe, we won't have the constraints that uh, people like Rees Mogg currently have because the workers' rights, a minimum level of workers' rights are part of being in Europe. Once we're out of Europe, I think Rees Mogg and people on his side of the Tory party will be pushing to bring those protections down. And of course the challenge is, if you say to someone who hasn't got a job, do you want a job without protections or do you want unemployment with theoretical protections? People are going to take the job without protections and that's not good for any of us. So finally, are you looking forward to campaigning? I am. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'd prefer it was a summer campaign. Um, it's easier to knock on doors uh, in daylight. Uh, but I'm looking forward to meeting people, talking to people and uh, looking forward to uh, winning for the Lib Dems.